Uh, I make my decisions on the basis of my moral commitment, and I take my ministry very seriously. I would not say that the civil rights movement is dead. It's simply that we are moving to a new phase of the movement. For uh, well now 12 years, we struggle to end legal segregation and all of the humiliation surrounding legal segregation. So it was a struggle for decency. It was a struggle to get rid of extremist behavior toward Negroes. Now we are in a new phase, and that is a phase where we are seeking genuine equality, where we are dealing with hard economic and social issues. And it means that the job is much more difficult. It's much easier to integrate a lunch counter than it is to guarantee an annual income. It's much easier to integrate a bus than it is to get a program that will force the government to put billions of dollars into ending slums. That it's a wonderful thing to work and be concerned about integrating public accommodations or integrating the public school, which are schools, which I will continue to work for with uh, vigor and with zeal. But I've also got to be concerned about the survival of a world in which to be integrated. And these issues to me are tied together in that sense. How did you arrive at this decision and who influenced your thinking? I thought about it for several months and finally I went away to write a book in Jamaica where I had a chance to reflect and meditate and uh, do a great deal of thinking about the war in Vietnam. And I came to the conclusion then that I had no alternative uh, but to take a vigorous stand against the war. Dr. King, when you speak out against this war, do you speak as a Negro opponent of the war? Is there something especially anti-Negro or racist about the war that impels you to speak out? I cannot overlook the fact that uh, I am a Negro and that this war is doing a great deal to destroy the lives of thousands and thousands of my brothers and sisters. We are dying physically in disproportionate numbers in Vietnam. Some 22 uh, and 4 tenths percent of the deaths, even though we are only about 11 percent of the population. The other thing is that we are dying spiritually and psychologically in disproportionate numbers at home in the ghettos. And I think the war itself accounts for our constant spiritual and psychological death here at home. I weighed the criticisms that I would get. Yes, sir. I thought about even the fact that some Negroes wouldn't understand and some respectable Negro leaders who are more concerned about being invited to the White House than invited to the cause of justice would be against me. I weighed all of this. And as I waited and as I prayed over it, something said to me that you've got to speak on this issue. If you don't speak on it and others don't speak, I'm not going to give up. I'll have even the rocks to cry out against this war. It's an evil war. And no matter where it leads, no matter what abuses it may bring, I'm going to tell the truth. Thank <laughs> you.